What's up, guys? Do you know that the Central Bank of Nigeria refused to allow Herbert Wigwe buy Access Bank in 2002 because they believed he was too young to own a bank at the time? Again, Wigwe had plans to expand Access Bank into Asia in early 2024, but he died before this could happen, sadly. Now, there are various stories or, or conspiracy theories circulating about Wigwe's death depending on one's perspective. As some Americans believe uh, he was killed by the United States president, while others think um, his friend, Aiboji, whom you will learn about later in this video, orchestrated it. Yeah, just take note of the name, Aiboji. Now, have you ever wondered how Wigwe's um, elder brother died in 1997? Now, there were also accusations against him regarding the delay in releasing funds to some organization. In fact, Okoroji, former P-Man president, implied that um, Herbert Wigwe's success and the establishment of the university were questionable. And do you know that Herbert Wigwe's dad also fought in the Biafra Civil War of 1967? Well, today I'm going to share some information about the Wigwe family including accusations that persisted even after his death, um, along with a brief and interesting biography of his father. Now, these reports were supposed to be uploaded on Monday, but I fell ill. Nonetheless, it's better late than never. So just recently, one Mr. Wilfred said that I'm beginning to suspect some of the rich men who have um, been crying non-stop since the death of Herbert Wigwe. I don't think it's out of love. It'd be like, say, their money day in hand, like day with them. Well, since the tragic death of um, Herbert Wigwe, his wife and son in an air crash over two weeks ago, many Nigerians have been shocked, you know, by the spread of one-sided stories about him on social media, aiming to harm the memory of the deceased banker one popular story revolves around the acquisition of intercontinental bank by access bank in 2012. some claim that intercontinental was a healthy bank when it was um, sold and that the sale was a favor to friends of the then cbn governor lamido sanusi who was also present during Uigwe's funeral. For someone like me who gets into a lot of trouble, I need my friends. I get into trouble without knowing how I'm going to come out of it. But as I said on that day, I go into trouble with my eyes closed because I know that at the end, there will always be some people, a few people in my life who will always be there for me. When you lose just one of those people, it leaves a vacuum in your life. In 2002, Uigwe and his business partner, Aiboji, you remember this man? You remember him? Ah, the man who some speculate could be behind Wigwe's death. In fact, let me read what they had said about him. They said, A man with the name Herbert Wigwe is a target for elimination. We understand the said man is currently a chairman at a bank with uh, the name access bank they said accessible bank well access bank in nigeria has been programmed to happen the coming weeks or months this plan is orchestrated by a certain aibuji who believes the existence of the said man is a threat to his own emergence before now aibuji already meet with the uh, man um, ebatu igwe threatening to take him down if he doesn't comply and resign his position. The man Aiboje has now contacted assassins and other people who he believes would help him facilitate his plans to take down Herbert Wigwe. In a phone call to a certain Mr. Yusuf, he said, take him out alongside his family, spare no one. The said man should be made to understand the situation as it is a terrible one. And they said, share this and make sure it gets to the man in question. We remain anonymous. Anyways, very interesting. Yeah. Well, let's continue. Now, they bought 
Access Bank, you know, at the time, Wigwe was just 36 years old. They faced a delay because the Central Bank of Nigeria thought they were too young to own a bank. However, from 2002 to 2017, Access Bank grew to be the fourth largest bank in Nigeria. Now, during this time, you know, Wigwe worked um, as the company's deputy managing director until 2014. Um, he also became the chairman of Access Bank Ghana Limited in 2013. From January 2014 until he passed away, he served as the CEO and Group Managing Director of Access Bank. Now, in 2018, Access Bank merged uh, with uh, Diamond Bank, becoming the largest bank in Nigeria. Now, we agree, like I said earlier, had plans to take the bank to the next level, like expand the bank into Asia in early 2024. But he died before this could happen. The investigation is just getting started into a helicopter crash in San Bernardino County that killed six people. The crash happened around 10 o'clock last night, east of the 15 freeway near Haloran Springs. The crash site is known for an abandoned gas station with a sign that says, low gas and eat. It's very close to the California-Nevada border, about 80 miles, matter of fact, from Las Vegas. The Eurocopter EC-120 took off from Palm Springs Airport and was headed to Boulder City, Nevada, but it never made it. The CEO of one of Nigeria's largest banks was on board. Herbert Wigway was killed along with his wife and son. I find it very weird that no one is talking about how there were six Nigerian billionaires who died in a plane crash mysteriously while on their way to the Super Bowl and how Biden just posted this cryptic ass message right after they died. The CEO of one of the largest banks in the country was on a helicopter with pilots, family, and the CEO slash chairman of the Nigeria Stock Exchange when their helicopter mysteriously caught fire and crashed while on their way to the Super Bowl. And what are the odds that Biden on his presidential ex account drops this photo with glowing red eyes and this weird caption that shocks all of America? And the caption for this picture that he actually posted on the presidential Twitter account was just like we drew it up. And everyone thought that they were talking about the Super Bowl when they weren't. I honestly believe that this is what they were talking about. And if you are unfamiliar with the Nigerian Stock Exchange and what they have going on right now with America and just the overall fight for power, money and greed, you need to pay attention to what is going on. One of the people on that aircraft was a chief executive of Access Bank and his wife and his son were among those six people that were on board and it went down shortly after 10 p.m. on Interstate 15 and all six people were killed including two pilots and the former chairman of NGX Group the Nigerian Stock Exchange and what's so crazy it is saying that authorities are vet are investigating it which means to me they may suspect foul play they are trying to say that this could take up to two years. This entire investigation could take up to two years and they are calling it a terrible tragedy. The Super Bowl was a giant ritual and those people in that helicopter think about it. If you take out the owner and CEO of a large bank, one of the largest banks in the country, you take off his wife and you take out his son. Who is left to get the money? Think about it. Furthermore, accusations against um, Herbert Wigwe um, regarding the delay in releasing funds to some organizations. Um, Access Bank, where uh, Wigwe was a major owner, is facing uh, legal actions involving the um, organization's account, and the bank is following legal procedures by withholding the funds until the case is resolved. Um, unfortunately, some people put the blame on him. Soon after Herbert Wigwe's death, Tony Okoroji, former P-Man president, who now leads the um, Copyright Society of Nigeria, that's Kosan, published an article raising questions about um, Wigwe's wealth and the naming of a, a university after his family. Okoroji implied that um, Herbert's success and the establishment of the university were questionable. In fact, in his article, Mokoji um, expressed skepticism about 
um, how we, we accumulated enough wealth to establish a university and questioned why it was named after his family. He also claimed that Access Bank was unjustly withholding funds from Coson. Um, however, these allegations lack evidence. As for the accusation against Access Bank, it is important to note that um, banks often follow legal procedures, like I said earlier, when there are uh, disputes over accounts. In this case, Access Bank may be withholding funds due to ongoing legal issues involving Coson's account. Now, in summary, Tony Okoroji's um, article raises doubts about Uyghur's wealth and actions, while also making accusations against Access Bank without providing sufficient evidence. Now, you could say that um, Herbert Wilgrave's dad is a resilient man, despite being an old soldier. The tragedy that struck his family is significant. Um, about 26 years ago, tragedy struck the family when their first child, Osita, passed away in a road accident on June 5, 1997. Now, while traveling from Lagos to Port Harcourt, according to a source who spoke with um, News Express, Osita, who had been driving from Lagos, tragically collided with a truck near their home, resulting in his death, along with a woman who was accompanying him on the journey. On that sorrowful day, their father, Shingo Wiyugui, that's the name of their father, Shingo, um then he was um 86 years old and a former director general of the uh, nigerian television authority that's nta was attending a minister's conference it was june 5 1997 when he received the heart-wrenching news of osita's passing now osita was actually 34 years old at the time uh tragically lost his life and shingu that's the father um, who also served as a volunteer pastor at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, recalled the moment he learned about his son's death. He said, I never sweated like that in my life before, and I didn't think uh, it was going to happen to me. For weeks, I couldn't go up to the altar. Um, I went, then I wept, and I came down. It was like somebody took a pair of forceps to draw out your heart from you, he said. Uh, that boy was one in a million. He had the attributes of a daughter. He had the attributes of a son. He was a solution provider to all family members. If I had him, I thought um, I had everything. For quite some time, I didn't feel life was worth living anymore. We spoke as brothers, not as father and son everyone hopes uh, their kids outlive them my parents might go before me that's what herbert wigwe's father said in an uh, interview with his wife stella back in 2018. now uh, they this couple they've been married for 56 years then i uh, just like they wish to you know outlive uh, their parents, they also prayed their kids would outlive them. But fate took away one of their children when they were old. Even though they already, you know, buried a son uh, 26 years ago. Before I let you go, um, family life, you're 85. And you have children, grandchildren, yes. great-grandchildren. Yes. How does it feel to achieve all this at this age now? Mm. I give thanks to God every day. First thing I do every day, give me so much joy. Mm -hmm. I just, a few weeks ago, with my grandchildren, big grandchildren, they were thrilling me outside this country on a holiday. Mm -hmm. It was such a joy to me. My only prayer is that as they grow, may they make a difference wherever they are. May they not join the flock mm. because <laughs> at the point in time, even right now, they are completely out of your control. So you just have to pray that if at that which you have mm. built into them, that they will live by it and make an impact in society wherever they are, they are, they are, they are led to stay. Now, Shingu, uh, that's Wigwe's oh. dad, 
was born on October 8, 1934. He went to Okrukwa Grammar School, then to Yaba Technical Institute, uh, now Yaba College of Technology, you know, where he learned about engineering. He worked at the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation, NBC. Before going to England, he got trained by the BBC and studied at Southampton Technical College, UK, and later at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, talking about how he joined the military during a church service on his 80th birthday, Shingu said he decided to become a soldier in 1963, leaving his civilian life behind. Uh, in his words, one day in 1963, I just decided and left home. And when I returned, I was a soldier, he said. Uh, he was in Kaduna with Olusegun Basanjo and Chukuma Kaduna um, Uziogu during um, Nigeria's first military coup in January 1966. He said, when I was in the army in Kaduna, I shared a place with Major Chukuma Kaduna Uziogu. Once, um, a brigadier uh, said some bad things about the Igbos and General Agui in Ransin. Um, I was upset and told uh, Muzeugu, who promised to deal with it. Uh, later, there was a coup, and I suspected Muzeugu was involved. Uh, luckily, I didn't say anything, or I might have been arrested too, he said. Um, he also fought in the Biafra Civil War of uh, 1967 and left the military as a captain in 1970. After the war, some of us who fought for Biafra were accepted back into the Nigerian army. I chose not to go back. Uh, he then worked on contracts, including one to build drainage along a bar road um, in Port Harcourt. He worked at NTA as a broadcast engineer, becoming the director general. Remember the particular occasion. I was stopped from broadcasting a particular, a particular issue. In fact, the event took place, I was there. On my way to my house, I got a telephone call. That day, I must not see the light of day. But then the news chaps have taken it into the studio. To save my head, I had to go to the station. Can I have that tape? I took the tape and went and locked it up in my house. Mm. You can see what I'm talking about. It was as bad as that. Okay, so um, looking at journalism of then and now, would you say that journalists are doing... He was also a serious Christian, becoming a pastor at the Redeemed Christian Church of God. When asked how he raised six successful children, he said, I call them every day. They are like my friends. Well, guys... That is where I'm going to hold it. Wigwe's dead brought back uh, a lot of sad memories and even bad um, information. You can say lack evidence about uh, Wigwe. May is so rest in peace. Guys, like this video, subscribe if you're watching for the first time. Until we see you next time, peace. So let's welcome Tochi Wigwe. Good morning. Good evening. Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. I always used to tell my father that I really hated public speaking. And he tried to convince me that he hated it as well. But it's just something he had to do. So I'm going to try my best to be fearless. Oh, God. In this moment, for the first time, your words resonate deeply within me. No longer do I want to tilt my head and squint my eyes in confusion. You are simply extraordinary. Amidst my tears, I reflect on the man that you were. Driven, determined, and always surpassing expectations. That was your ethos. You urged me to reach new heights I never even imagined. Whenever doubt clouded my mind, 
you would chuckle, chuckle knowingly and say, you really just don't know whose child you are. You'll soon find out. <laughs> and once again, you were right. I've come to find out. I could never fathom how you managed to do it all. It seemed inconceivable. Turning everything you touched to gold while remaining an unwavering anchor for your family and friends. Distance meant absolutely nothing to you. Even when I studied overseas, you travel continents on a whim just to see me for a couple of minutes before heading back to your responsibilities. Also those midday check-ins to make sure I was doing my work when I was ingrained. If not, I'd be disciplined seriously. <laughs> These were a testament to your steadfast and ever constant love. Whenever your name graces my lips, I make sure to emphasize that my father was a feminist, a champion of equality. Oh my God. He was a divine blessing in my life, instilling in me the confidence to defy convention, to never conform. According to him, my mother, Hannah, and I were the most beautiful. And my nickname was also Pretty. Who will prompt me to flash a peace sign in every photo? Who will engage in marathon debates with my friends and myself on flights to Cape Town? Who will inquire what are they saying about me online today? And who will ask me about my thoughts on Wigwe University? You were a paradox. A tower of strength with a heart as soft as silk. You can never raise your voice at me without calling me an hour later to apologize. Your influence extended far beyond our family circle. You effortlessly convinced my friends that their futures lay in Nigeria, urging them to elevate their aspirations. You've left me with enormous shoes to fill, but you've also gifted me with an unwavering support system. You nurtured your relationships with such care that you've bestowed upon me fathers to guide and protect me. For that, I'm eternally grateful. I love you deeply, and I ache for the day we'll be reunited. To resume our cherished gossip sessions, to continue our pep talks about life and everything in between. With all my love, Mama T, a.k.a. You're Pretty.